Want to raise your chest to a new level? Challenge Yourself is an exclusive, innovative experience designed for Chess24 Premium members. Train like a champ with a unique set of lessons prepared by the coaches of the challengers. Boris Gelfin and Co. will help you improve your chess. Play versus a champ. Play a grandmaster each day in Banter Blitz. Take advantage of this incredible opportunity from June 10th. Go premium and challenge yourself. So let's take someone with a random, with a random account, with a random name that just seems attractive. Play live online against the world's top chess players while they stream their thoughts live. As a Chess24 Premium member, seize the chance to have your moment of fame. Get a peek inside their lives with question and answer sessions, in-depth teaching, analysis and interviews. The Champions Chess Tour, with countless accompanying events, is happening now. Tune in on Chess24. And Queen takes F3. Oh, what is going wow. on? Oh, this is going to be a fortress. I just don't see any hopes at all. This is very easy. Just rook back and forth. Taking chess to the next level. Wow. Wow. Wow, yeah. Nothing else to say. Wow. Creating the future of the sport. Introducing the Champions Chess Tour. Ten months, ten tournaments. The world's best players online and on TV. And Queen Hello everybody, here we go again. Uh this is um this is my banter blitz for chess twenty-four, the second uh second day in second day in a row, so let's just uh, jump into it. And the first game will be will be a game against Mr. Yup. I uh, yeah somehow uh, forgot to uh, to play him yesterday, which is which is a mistake I'm not going to repeat. So this time uh, this time we'll start with this game. Yeah, start with a uh, one a four, and he goes for Cecilia. And so, what should we, what should we play here? Let's go knight c three. Knight f six. So now d four will uh, will transpose. Okay, let's play h three. I think Hikaru played this um, this line with h three uh, in the last World Blitz Championship many times. I don't know what is the point exactly, but I think um, the uh, the point should be somehow related to facing a six with um, uh, with something different than g four. So I played g four, and then after knight c six, I'm happy to transpose somewhere. Once again, don't know what is this exactly. Um, how should I play this? Maybe not f5.
Yeah, many moves here for black. G G6 is the most obvious. D5 is very natural as well. But d5 you kind of need to calculate. So what happens after e takes d5? And before knight e3, I kind of like. And bishop takes f5, we have uh, d takes c6. Okay, let's try it. And before knight e3 looks very solid for white. Or even bishop g2. So he probably wants bishop takes f5, d takes c6, and something here, but what is it, something exactly? Maybe queen takes d1, king takes, and then long castle. But we can still play bishop d2 simply, and um, yeah, and it looks okay. He still goes for it, though. Okay, so we take. Yeah, he castles with the check, so now probably bishop d2. He has some ideas, bishop e4 or even, uh, yeah, even uh, knight e4. Yeah, king goes bishop e4, okay. So let's say we take on e4, knight takes, c takes b7. After king b7, I guess we have bishop g2. And after uh, king b8, we probably go bishop d3 and play the sharp thing. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Okay. Lost is probably a bit too strong though, but um, in general, black is a pawn up and there is nothing nothing wrong with that pawn. Plays rook d8. Okay, I believe we have to take on f7, good or bad. Now it's time to figure out if there is an increment in this, in this game. I think he normally challenges me with an increment. Uh, so um, this is sort of good news. Yeah, maybe this is sort of closer to a draw, actually. I mean, we have chances to survive. Um, first, we, we avoid wandering from the stream. But actually, maybe there is no increment. I don't know. No, there is increment. Okay, fine. Then we will probably hold this. G5. Is he still better? Maybe not. Knight H5 looks sort of weird to me, like... 
the knight is definitely misplaced there. And otherwise, it's probably also fine. Yeah, he goes knight e8, which kind of makes sense. So he does not want to play with a um, uh, with a knight on h5. We can take. We can also play rook c1. Yeah, let's go rook c1. So maybe so if he takes on d1, we have knight takes d1 check. Yeah, sorry, sorry, buddy. Okay, now it has to be lost for black. I think so. Let's say we go knight. I don't know a4 or maybe rook c5. Let's go rook c5. Rook c5 followed by knight c4 looks very, very natural to me. Yeah, and king f4. So we kind of, uh, kind of managed to to activate all the pieces, which is normally a good thing to do in this strange game. Yeah, knight d4, maybe knight g4. I only need not to blunder the, the rook somehow, but I guess. Um, yeah, I guess I'm capable of uh, doing this. Yeah, knight f6. We are obviously very happy with uh, with any trade here. Yeah, let's say h4. Knight, yeah, knight d6 check wins probably. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this was not exactly convincing, but uh, had to do too many things during the game. So how do we switch to the old play zone? Okay. And now just, okay. Yeah, I see, but okay, never easy. Yes. But why are you doing this? This is like, yeah? And now we play, yeah? Yeah, but there are no challenges here, obviously. As you announced it to be to be a new play zone. Yeah, yeah, but there are there are no there are no challenges here as you can see. So do we go back to the new play zone or what? Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, now we're playing. Okay, sure. All right, I guess we're back. And we have the second game with white in a row. And we play Mr. Winning Technique. Everybody is playing Sicilian today. What's wrong with these people? Okay, let's try bishop b5 this time. Like I always try to, to avoid the main lines with d4, at least for, for some time. Yeah, now we take and go d4. This is a slightly different thing. I guess I played this line when I was like 13 or uh, or even younger. Yeah, rook e1, and I think bishop d6. Yeah, he goes bishop e7. I think bishop g6, knight d5 was my big idea back in the days. But it does not work, unfortunately. Can we play knight d5 here? Knight d5 takes, takes. Looks like we can. Knight e5, d6 maybe. Whatever. 
on its rises. Night f5 was also interesting, but then I think back is in time to take and uh, simply castle with a uh, quite a good position. Also, it could be kind of interesting for white as well. So knight d5, I think he, not that he has to take, but if you don't take, then it's uh, like we definitely gain some style points for free. So I guess black has to take, he takes d5 and go knight e5. And then we will think, like at very least we have f4, which I'm not a big fan of, but at least we'll probably get the piece back. And what I kind of want to play is knight f5 or d6. Okay, he simply castles, which is a good move, but a very, very soft one. Yeah, I'm probably probably forced to take on c6. If I go knight f5, he probably has d6, and it seems to work. f5 is hanging, so I have to. Yeah, I have to take. And plays this boring position. Maybe I'm slightly better here, but probably not. I guess bishop d6 is a move like white is trying to get bishop f4 with the tempo, so bishop d6 is very, very logical in that regard. He goes to f6, which is also decent, of course. Okay, I think we play bishop f4. He probably wants queen b6. But then we'll try to come up with some tricks. What are the tricks exactly? I don't know, actually. But it feels like there could be a trick. Not a winning trick, but some trick. Also, why would you think here? So basically, queen b6 is the is the most natural move, and there is nothing wrong with it. It seems. Yeah, queen b6 is played. So, can we play c3? Yeah, in general, it's very very solid for boss. Let's try c3. So if he takes on b2, we have some bishop d6 ideas. And there is some rook b1. Yeah, that's why he simply takes. We have to capture back. Now maybe bishop e6. And then we'll go queen g3 and try some. I don't know what actually. Sort of try, trying to confuse him here, but. In general, if black is in time to play bishop e6, bishop d5, and f6, then he's fine. He simply takes on d4, which is not uh, which is not bad move either. Um, so if we go bishop e5, then he plays queen g4, I believe. And uh, if we go rook a to d1, which I will play, he will probably go to f6 simply. And then it is very, very dry, like not not that uh, not that we can ever be worse here, but um, we probably have to have to force a draw somehow. Like Bishop D6, Queen takes F3, G takes, Rook D8, Bishop C7, Rook D1, Rook D1, Bishop E6, then H3 and Rook, uh, Rook D8 check. But this is not what we want to play, obviously. On the other hand, if he plays bishop e6 and then gets uh, queen g6 and bishop d5, then it's just worse. Okay, whatever. Let's try some some rook e5. Yeah, bishop e6, and then let's say we just go queen g3. Then we go rook d2 e1 and try to get some. Rook g5 or bishop g5 at some point. 
uh, he goes rook d8, which creates some potential of bishop g5, but uh, not yet. So we go we go to e1. Then we probably go h4. Pretty much whatever happens, h4 is always uh, is always a very useful move here. First of all, it's a loop, and secondly, after queen g6, we will have a um, we will have h5 in some of the lines. Yeah, takes takes. Bishop takes a2. Okay. So he basically calls our bluff. Was it a bluff though? Like if we go bishop g5. We can also play rook g5. So rook g5, he plays g6, bishop e5, queen e6, and he is alive, which unfortunately means he's winning. We can also play bishop g5, which I kind of like more. So now queen g6 runs into bishop e7. So queen g6 sh should be the move. No, he goes uh, he goes this way. Okay, bishop e7. He has a check, but then we just play king h2 and bishop f6 is coming. By the way, if white is to move, then queen takes g7 is checkmate. He does not allow it, so we'll, ha we'll have to win in some, uh, some prosaic way. Like bishop f6 or, yeah, probably. And then queen f4. So queen h6 is a threat, and rook, uh, queen g6 runs into, into rook a check. So white is winning. Thanks for the game. It was a tense one. All right. Mr. Blunder Panda. It's actually nice to have a break from uh, from all the Blunder Blitzes. As, uh, then when you come back, like, a month later and you see all the same nicknames it's uh i mean it's almost like a, a classmates meeting or something still sicilian all right let's try c3 this time and bishop e2 now it's a six then i guess i'm supposed to play d4 but i could be wrong so knight takes e4 would run into queen a4 check. This is a little trick that makes the line work. He plays bishop g4. I don't think um, the way he plays in the opening is uh, exactly precise. Now what should be better? Maybe just knight c3 and then d5. I could have started with d4, d5 as well. But I think it's even better to play d5 here. Maybe I should have included castling as well, but I like it this way. He takes. Now even g takes kind of makes sense. There is also some d takes c6, bishop takes c2, queen a4, but it turns into b5. Otherwise, it would make sense. Um, like, do we really need this g takes? I think g takes is kind of strong here, but do we really need it? Eh, probably not. Okay, let's take with the bishop then. Ninety-five. I think we are happy to take on a six here. On the other hand, we are also happy to play bishop e two. We are happy in general. Okay, now I guess it's definitely time to take and... Uh... But why is the time to take like Does he really want to take on d5? I don't think so. On the other hand, taking on a6 is very, very tempting, creating a weakness. All right, let's take. Let's keep it simple. As a uh, wise man says. And then let's just castle. Then we go queen b3. And white is just comfortably much better. We have two bishops. We're, uh, we're ahead in development. So uh, it all looks nice for, for white. 
You should be seven is probably st still the move like good or bad. You have to you have to develop the pieces somehow. We should be seven, queen b3, queen d7, then we have some knight a4 ideas. There is also a simple concept with uh, something like rook d1 and bishop f4. He wants it with the queen on c8. Then we somehow bring the rook to uh, to the c file. Don't know if we play bishop f4 or um, bishop a3. Okay, let's say we go to, I don't know, f4. Magnus would have played bishop e3, I believe he he does not. Um, he does not like when um, yeah when his pieces are not protected. But bishop f4 should be good enough as well. And now we probably just go rook d1, maybe even rook a to d1. So in terms of ideas, we obviously want to play rook f to d1 and rook a to c1, but here exactly, I think he is forced to give up d6 anyway. Uh, so he will probably castle. No, he doesn't. It's still okay though. But yeah, I mean, if black castles and we take on d6, then it's kind of useful to uh, to have the rook on f1 just to uh, prevent some, I don't know, knight g4, knight takes a two nonsense or something. In general, if we win the d6 pawns, then we do not need this rook on c1 that much. So now after he, he played e5, he cannot really castle. And we still have two bishops, so it should be should be quite lost for black. Goes knight a5, which allows queen a4 check, and he has to go back. And then we probably play knight d5. And the point is that after castling, we have a yeah, unfortunately we have knight b6, but my idea was queen takes c6. Having uh, having knight b6 makes it less less impressive. So he has to take on d5. I will remove e d, and then he has to go b5. Yeah, exactly. Now we have many many moves. Bishop takes b5 is good. Queen e4 followed by bishop g4 is also good. Okay, let's play queen e4. Try to keep it simple once again. Goes knight d8. All right, so let's say uh, let's say we include rook c1. Then we probably include a check from from h5 to provoke g6. And then we ah okay he he wants to play this way, which makes sense. We probably still bring the bishop to e6, or maybe not. F4 is probably a very good move. Bishop b6 also looks nice. Maybe there is no increment, by the way, which is unpleasant. No, there is an increment. Okay, then. Then I think we will manage not to not to spoil it. Also, maybe I should not have allowed. I should not have allowed castling at all. Maybe I should have played um, something like f4 early on. On the other hand, it's still very, very bad for black. Now we bring uh, we bring one more rook to, to the seventh rank. He plays bishop d8. Okay. We probably just take and go rook c7. Goes g6, and then I guess we can take on g6. And then queen takes, and rook takes f7 wins. Yeah. Yeah, this game had a, poten uh, had a potential of, uh, of being thematic, but I think at some point I, um, I misplayed it badly. Luckily for me, the, the position was good enough. Okay. Um, okay, me, Mr. Dangerous Ride. This is a 
sort of a must game as well. I always play this guy. 1d4. So I guess I played the Ben on it yesterday. Let's uh let's try let's try the Dutch this time. Nice c3. Okay, d6. And g6. So the point of the smooth order with nice c3 is uh is that if you start with uh g6 instead of d6, then they want to play h4, h5, and uh checkmate you somehow. And I think it's like even objectively, it's very, very bad for black. That's why black normally starts with d6 to wait for something like g3. And then, um, yeah, then we're back in the book with g6, bishop, g7. So this line is called the Leningrad variation. Leningrad is a uh, is old name of Russian city, uh, St. Petersburg. He plays queen c2. Okay. I guess knight a6 is the move here. And now maybe queen queen c7. Yeah, probably. Or maybe I misplayed it a little. That could also be the case. It's actually sad that uh, that the Dutch is not that popular nowadays with uh, with all the new engines crashing it. The opening is nice, just doesn't work. I actually remember exactly when the the Dutch was back to uh, to the top level for quite some time. I think in uh, like 2013 or something there was a. There was a mind games uh, rapid and blitz where Panamara started uh, started to to play it in all the games and then um, then a good fr a friend of mine Vladislav Tkachev who is um, who is uh, Grishov's second told me is, uh, that it makes a lot of sense and that he has a feeling that uh, like all the people will start playing it now and I was sort of laughing like I said come on I don't see the as the top guys playing uh, playing Dutch but he was actually right and there was like a short period of maybe one or two years when um uh when all the elite players played uh, played dutch from from time to time and i think peter swidler play, uh, played it in the candidates even so it was not a joke at all uh so yeah vladislav once again proved himself to be to be a brilliant opening specialist well you do not become Grishuk's second for nothing so it all makes sense and then i guess at some point like there was a there was a rise of the new new generation of uh, of engines and for some reason this new generation uh, simply crashed all the all the old lines still like if it is a surprise you can play you can play the dutch from from time to time but you normally play, play it once a year at maximum it's even better if you don't play it at all maybe I still do do have some nice memories uh, related to to the Dutch defense. For instance, we, when we played the the European Championship, I think I won a very uh, a very important game against um, a Pashikian in our match in our match against Armenia, uh, which helped which helped us a lot to win uh, the match and the whole thing. But it was exactly as the, the case. Like I, uh, like at that point, I think I had not played Dutch for like two or three years. So we finally decided it is time. It was all also very difficult to to convince our uh, our coach that like I will not lose in twenty moves. But finally, yeah, he said, okay, 
go and do it, you will probably lose, but you know, we have to try. Luckily for us, I did not lose. So what I'm doing here, I think I was outplayed at some at some points, and I think I was uh, kind of better. Now I'm back to being outplayed. Okay, let's play rook d8. Activate the rook. Knight f4 isn't there, but I failed to to make it work yet. Knight f4 takes e takes e5 is a problem. So he's asking for knight f4 now. Okay. He is definitely not listening to the stream. Maybe he has to play bishop f1 simply. This knight on f4 looks nice, but it's not clear what is doing exactly. It will probably, you know, stay there, but... Yeah, still I don't see a way to create a threat. Maybe we just go g5, g4. And um, try to, to open up the file. Bishop g4 was also a very interesting move. Actually, maybe I had to play bishop g4, but I kind of like g5. g5, g4 is a very solid way of attacking. He actually blunders rook, which is a... Uh, which is annoying, because I want to play g4 anyway. Okay, let's play g4, let's pretend there is no bishop takes a2. And it's like we play a normal game. Okay, rook d2, so he spotted it. So now we have knight h3 followed by rook takes f3. Uh, we also have some knight g6, but knight h3 is, is a bit too good to ignore it, probably. Yeah. Yeah, now we take the queen. Now it's important to throw in rook takes d2. And then we go g takes. And probably win. He plays bishop f1, okay. Let's say a, b, a, b. So how should we win this? We somehow need to find a way uh, to activate the bishop on g7. Maybe we go queen d8 first, then at some point we go bishop f6, bishop g5. We can also try queen d1. Just not to not to uh, give the pawn away, yeah, let's go queen d1, rook h5, okay, bishop g4 looks nice, yeah, so let's say bishop g4, now I guess we can play queen c2 check, and bishop h6, yeah, so there is no checkmate, right, bishop h6, rook g4, bishop takes c3, yeah, I think it works. Yeah, takes and queen f2 wins. Okay, thanks for the game. This is actually very annoying, by the way. Like, I wanted to stop this stupid thanks for the game thing. But you guys see, seem to like it a lot, and I started to uh, to like it a, lo a lot as well. And I can say uh, uh, the same, you know, about my camera. So it, it's not about my camera; it's basically about my my laptop, which is like really, really old. And uh, like my coach is begging me to to buy a new one for like years. So just to. Uh, just to clarify, like it takes, I mean, it takes, it takes me like five minutes just to switch on the laptop, then it takes me five more minutes to like wait for it to, to be ready to work. Like you need to close all the stupid, all the stupid windows and stuff. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it is obviously, it's obviously not exa exactly comfortable, but for some reason I'm sort of, uh, you know, true to this laptop. It has been through, through many, 
many di uh, difficult battles. I don't want to buy new ones. That is uh, that is a newbie sort of. I will probably have to though. I even had a problem like when when I play this Magnus store, uh, we normally need to we normally need to set the uh, the virtual uh, playground uh, background. And my my laptop my laptop is that old that there is no even such a such an option there. So <laughs> I mean I had to I had to ask my coach to uh, to give me a laptop to play. And uh, yeah, I mean at the same time he he works with a. Uh, with mine, he's not exactly a big fan of it. Everybody's uh, everybody is disconnecting for some reason. What's going on? Come on, play move. I played one d four. No. I'm sort of worried. Like if I will, if I will abort a few more games, I will probably be banned on the server, and then, um, yeah, then there is no way we can continue. Okay, let's play some guy from Ukraine. Maybe he will play move. No. Could be something wrong with the play zone, though, because uh, I mean it's hard to uh, to believe that all the people disconnect to troll me. I mean, it could be the case, of course. But... Yeah. But how? Where? Yeah. I like this one. Yeah? Okay, sure. Okay. Okay, now we'll probably probably play someone who is there. Or maybe not. 1 and 4 okay there we go 1 and 5 solid so just to finish the story so i mean it's not about my camera it's basically an integrated camera of a very very old laptop so all the jo all the jokes about the soviet era webcam are really nice and i like them a lot but i mean i don't even have a soviet era webcam i don't have a i mean i don't have a camera at all I had to uh, to afford one uh, for the yeah for the Magnus store, but it's way too good to use it in the Bantra Blitz. So what's going on here? I think e4, d takes e4, knight takes c4, queen d4 was a like an old uh, an old idea of Bronstein, which is uh, which is not brilliant objectively, but it's kind of nice in terms of ideas. Queen e2 is something new to me. How should we react? We can simply take on c4 and play the game. Feels very natural. Okay, let's just take and go bishop c5. It's very important not to remove bishop c5 as d takes c4 is uh, technically an option as well. So we had to wait for a move. Yeah, so now we just castle and try to try to checkmate at the king side. We might fail, but at least we know what we are doing here, which is a, which is a nice start already. Yeah, castles, castles. Knight, I don't know, d2, and then we start it like bishop g4 maybe. Some rook e8, a3, and so on. Knight d2, okay. Okay, bishop g4 I kind of like. Queen e1 is only move, which is not a reason to discard it. And then we go rook e8 maybe. Threatening k3, so knight b3 is sort of forced as well. And then we go bishop d6. 
And um, yeah, as I promised, we try to, to checkmate there. We'll probably play queen d7, some bishop f3 or h3 eventually. He goes h3. Wow. This is brave. Um, yeah, I mean, all the aggressive move, moves look look reasonable to me. Bishop f3 is reasonable, taken on h3 is also reasonable. Queen d7, no, no. It does not mean we are better, though. We could be, we could be even worse here, but. Uh, for the moment, it kind of looks tempting. Yeah, I mean, we need to choose a move. Okay, let's go with bishop f3. So what's the, what's the plan after g takes, by the way? Queen d7, he has a four, and then he plays queen e3. So we probably take first some queen bishop e3. I feel like it is a mistake. I think he, he had to play queen d1. So it was very important to, to attack as a f3 pawn. Now we are in time with uh, queen d7, queen takes h3. I guess I can even remove queen h3 here. There is no stopping me, basically. So yeah, I will promote it. Yeah, knight takes f3. Now pretty much everything queens. Rook e4 is a move I like. We bring one more piece and then um, rook g4 is a checkmating stress. I start to feel like it's uh, it's a bit uh, too dark here, by the way. We'll probably have to switch on the light at some point. Okay, I have a minute. I have a minute to play rook g4, yeah? so maybe this is a good moment. Okay, and nothing really happened yet. Yeah. Okay, ninety-five. Yeah, once again, like pretty much everything wins. Let's play rook g4, then remove queen g4, queen h3 and queen h2. Thanks for the game, okay. Um, yeah, for some reason it feels like it was way uh, way tougher back in the days. So I think in my first Bunter Blitz I played like three games and lost one of them. <laughs> yeah, so now I kind of uh, kind of adjusted a little. Uh, all right. Mr. Oops, Kitty, or Kitty? No, Kitty. Yeah, sure. Pardon me. So, what do we play? Let's try um, e4 again. Maybe this guy knows that there are some other openings than Sicilian. Mm, he probably does not want to play at all. All right, c5, no, he does not know, okay. If people are trolling me, this is funny. All right, what are the options here? Let's play bishop e2. And bishop b5. And now I tricked you, buddy. You you wanted to play the Sicilian, but now we play the, the, the English opening with colors reversed. So I'm not that annoyed anymore. So it's literally one c4, e5, knight c3, bishop b4. And we play with black. So this is a completely different opening and you failed to troll me. 
Easy. I think we, uh, when I was a kid, I actually had a, <laughs> such a prep for for some of the games. Like I was white, and I played the guy who, like, always played, uh, who always played one. Uh, wait a second. Is there a 4 Um. Knight c4 takes, knight d6, king f8, knight g5, bishop e8, and then something like knight takes f7, takes queen f3. Okay, whatever. Let's just take. So I played the guy who um, who would normally play play an English opening as white, but he he would always play one c4, e5, g3 to to avoid knight c3, bishop b4 system. So I played one e4, c5, bishop e2. Provoked, uh, provoked uh, knight c6 and played bishop before. Was very proud of my brilliant prep. I think I even managed to uh, to win the game, but this kind of uh, this kind of needs to be needs to be checked. Okay, cd cd. I think quite a slightly better. It's not much, but it is pleasant. It's quite important that he has played a6, so we can play um, we can play knight b6 on some of the lines, which is quite annoying for black. He plays b5. Wow, this is aggressive. Okay, I guess we go knight b6 anyway, and then after rook b8, we will think we have some knight d5. No, he goes to d8. Mm -hmm. I did not see this coming, to be honest. It feels natural to go bishop g5 and provoke f6, and then just develop the pieces slowly. Like bishop d2, rook c1, queen b3, play it simple. Or we can try some knight d5 here. Knight d5. Okay, knight d5 looks fun. Let's try this. So queen f7, and then we will play knight c7 check to prevent him from castling. Um, which, I mean, is not exactly a great achievement, but it kind of makes sense. If he takes on d5, I guess we are happy after uh, after ed. Uh, what's going on in chat? Not much. Uh, let's go back to the game. Yeah, so knight c7 check was the point. Yeah, so now we need to figure out if we really need to be fast. I mean, if we do need do need to be fast, we can try d5. So d5, e d, e d, knight e5, maybe rook takes e5 even. Okay, let's say we do it. I could obviously just play uh, something like bishop e3 or uh, bishop f4. d5 is kind of more ambitious, but it could be double h as well. He goes ed. So I wanted to play takes d5 here. He will probably play knight e5. And then we have uh, all kinds of ideas. Like rook takes e5 is there, knight e6 check is there. Knight e6 check is probably just winning, by the way. Yeah, so knight e6 takes, takes. Then after queen takes e6, we have uh, rook takes e5. 
and d5 runs into queen takes d8, and f5 runs into bishop takes uh, d8 as well. So he has to take on e6, and then after d, he needs to he needs to find something like queen e7. But it does not look good for uh, for black anyway. We will probably just play bishop h4, and all the ideas remain. He takes on f3, which gives us a brilliant, brilliant pass pawn. Uh, so f takes g5 is not a threat. So we can just improve a little, rook a to d1. Bring one more piece to the game. Rook c1 was also nice, followed by bishop d2, bishop a5. But I just want to go for the d6 pawn, like bishop f4, queen d5, and take on d6. Goes h6. Okay, I wanted to play bishop f4 anyway. Um, King g8. All right. I mean, we can go for style points by. Uh, by taking on d6 and then playing um, playing e7, he has king f7, so we probably don't need it. Um, yeah, let's include h4 maybe. h5, yeah, now I want to rook d5. Followed by queen d3. Yeah, and the point is that after queen d3, it's not only d6 that is under attack, but also rook takes h5 as a threat. Yeah. And we managed to make it work. Queen b7, okay, we have uh, quite a lot of good moves here. Okay, let's go with rook h7 maybe. Then h5, h6, as simple as that. Okay, h takes. Yeah, I think we have an increment, so it's. Uh... I mean, it's reasonably solid for white. Okay, thanks for the game. All right, let's play Mr. Crypto. Who is Mr. Crypto? Could be Rajabov, maybe. He's very much into this uh, Bitcoin stuff. 1c4. Okay, let's try the Dutch again. I think against 1c4, it kind of uh, it kind of makes even more sense because then. Systems with a uh, with a pawn on c2, and some of them are actually smart so we kind of uh, kind of prevent something here goes for the line with bishop g5 i don't think i uh, looked at it a lot to be honest can we play knight e4 i guess we can so he will probably take and play something like knight g1 which might make sense but it does not Look good enough to to make us discard ninety four. Also, maybe it is good enough. I don't know. Uh, so, can we play c five? All right. Let's say we go c five. In general, black has to be fast here. Like if white is in time to play e three, ninety two, like ninety three, all the stuff, we, we will be much worse. So we have to do something with like d5 or c5. He plays bishop h6. But then again, I guess we can take on h6 and take and take on d4. It's quite hard to, to believe we'll get a checkmated with a, like the lonely queen in the attack. Some knight h3 is there though. We have to be precise, but in general black has to be faster.
Night H3 happens. Okay, we have many moves. We can play Queen A5 check to force King D1. And then many things are there. Like E3 is interesting. Rook F5 is uh, technically legal, but it kind of looks weird. Okay, I don't think you play queen d2 here to trade queens being a pawn down. Yeah, so king d1 is sort of forced. And then we need to come up with some, some approach here. I quite like e3. e3, f takes, d takes, queen takes e3, and then we get time. We can play d5 for knight c6. Yeah, let's do this. So the point is that uh, knight g5 is obviously faced by queen d2 checkmate. So he has to take twice. Yeah. And now something like d5 maybe. d5 does make sense to me. We, we open the bishop, so after some queen h6 we'll have uh, bishop takes h3 in many lines. So we basically prevent we prevent all the checkmating ideas. And then we try to play like knight to six, rook d8 at some point and uh, checkmate the king in the center. He probably has to switch somehow for uh, for trying to trade queens, like queen d2 maybe. But then it is obviously comfortable for black. We can just... Uh... Why is it comfortable, by the way? I don't know. Like I was about to say we can take on d2 and take on c4, but then he plays e3. And all and all of a sudden all of his pieces are uh, developed reasonably. Black is obviously never worse there, but I would expect it to be way better for black than this position. Yeah, he does find queen d2. He does find queen d2, all right. Huh. It's not simple. I mean, we can try to be super ambitious to play queen b6. Basically, give up the d5 pawn to say uh, we will checkmate the the king in the corner. Okay, let's try this. Like, I don't, I don't really, don't really believe in it that much, but. Uh, Black should not be worse for sure. Don't know why I'm sure to be honest, but yeah, somehow c c takes d5 and then something like bishop f5 or even bishop takes h3 followed by um, knight d7 or knight c6. Looks very nice. Here bishop e6 was my point. It's very important that we uh, that we open the d file. That obviously increases our chances to to checkmate the guy. I think queen takes d5 was a mistake actually. I mean now it's should be very bad. Yeah, he plays queen b5, but yeah, we have queen d4 check and stuff. I think it will not work. We can we can also try some queen is three pretty much still mating him. Yeah, we have many moves. Queen d4 check looks very logical. King c2. Wow, this guy is really brave. So after bishop f5, he wants king b3 or what? I mean, we can also play knight c6 simply. There is not much going on, we simply checkmate, but um, yeah, okay, let's go knight to six. Whenever I'm uh, I'm not sure wh what to do, I try to try to develop the pieces. And this approach basically seems to be good enough. 
rook d1. So now we control him a little and play rook d8. Like if I really want to troll him, I can play king g7. Like you play rook d1, okay, like what do you want exactly? Any reasonable move would obviously win quickly, but king g7 is just a funny, yeah, funny thing to play. And um, he was probably sort of surprised and lost some time. Okay, thanks for the game. This king g7 thing was a bit dirty, but um, sometimes we have to, f uh, we need to have fun. And now we go to play uh, Mr. Monkey King. All right. Okay, let's try the, the Dutch again. Who really cares? that we have white, we can still do the same thing. C5, okay, G3. I guess even here they sometimes play H5. Try, trying to checkmate even, um, even a tempo down, but here I think it's uh, less scary. Should we castle? Probably, probably we need to. Knight f6, okay. Can we play knight e5? It's pretty much the same scenario. Okay, let's try knight e5. So we had the same position with the queen on d7, I believe, in the previous game. So with the queen on d7, it was like knight e5. No, I think he played bishop h3 somehow, yeah? How was it? I don't know. Yeah, I think it was like with the queen on d7, knight e5 takes takes knight g8 is exactly the position we had in the in the previous game. Bishop d7. Okay, bishop d7 is uh, quite soft. Let's try c4, e6. Okay. This guy is really solid. Um, should we play cd like? Probably not, but I want to. Okay, let's take. If he takes with the knight, we're uh, kind of happy in terms of uh, positional stuff. So he has to take with the pawn, knight c3. And now it feels like d4 is a very, very, uh, very, very big move. Yeah, d4, and my plan was to play queen b3. Don't know if it works. But I have gambled already. Like if I don't play Queen B3, I'm just much worse. So I basically I basically decided to to bet a lot on this Queen B3 thing. So if it doesn't work, it's a bit too late to to look for uh, for an alternative. So knight takes e5, f takes e5, and maybe bishop e6. Queen takes b7, rook b8. Yeah, I mean, it's a mess as always. He plays it immediately, which is strange, by the way. So if we take on b7, knight takes e5, we can take on a8, no? Yeah, I guess we can, okay. So knight takes e5, f takes e5 would uh, would transpose to the line I mentioned before, but I guess here we just take the rook. And we are some material up, it seems. Yeah, so now we are an exchange up according to my mass. And I think my mass kind of works here. Uh, works here. 97, all right. So now we have to convert this somehow. Yeah, there are many ways. Okay, let's just keep it simple. Go BC, go D4. Push the pawns. It's very nice to have the pawn center, especially when you're in exchange up. So bishop f4 maybe. 
Okay, pretty much any move wins. So yeah, let's just keep it simple once again. Go bishop e three, prepare rook b one, rook c one, so on. Um. I got stuck uh, between the few browser windows, but now I'm back, I believe. Yeah, so let's try rook b7, maybe. Yeah, rook b7 followed by d5 looks very convincing to me. But once again, it all looks it all looks convincing when you're uh, an exchange up. So can we play d5, bishop h3, e6? I guess we can. Then after f takes, we play rook takes d7. Yeah, here we have e6 as well. So basically, if he takes with a pawn, then uh, yeah, d7 is not protected by bishop anymore. So we win more material. And now it's even more. After bishop takes d5, we'll, uh, we'll capture f5. Okay, thanks for the game. Let's continue. So where are the stars? I think the stars failed to uh, to uh, to make it to the new play zone. Like normally, I had a lot of challenges from uh, from uh, three thousand guys, but they are not there yet. Okay, let's play Mr. Gustafsson Gambit. I think he. He also try uh, try to I know he he actually disconnected. Okay, that was my fault. I think the, this guy tried to uh, uh, to play yesterday as well, and I forgot to uh, to play him. But I'm really curious about the like what's the Gustafsson gambit exactly. Should probably ask Gustafsson himself. Um, okay, let's continue this Dutch nonsense. Now he's also disconnected, but he was there like 30 seconds ago. This is tough. Let's try these guys in. Hello, are you there? Yeah, he is, okay. Then we, yeah, then we do this f4, knight f3, g3, bishop g2 again. So there is basically, there is basically a similar system with colors reversed. They normally play it with a bishop on a seven or, um, yeah, I mean, if you are white, you play it with e3, bishop e2. Makes a lot of sense. Black should normally try to get uh, to get e pawn running. So now that we play it with colors reversed, it's white who has to who has to push the e pawn. He will probably take and play e5. No, he he plays e5 immediately when. In general, yeah, playing um, playing e5 is a very thematic reaction, obviously. Now, normally, if you want to gamble, you just go uh, you just go f5 and try to checkmate. Okay. Why not? So then you you basically don't don't care about the queen side and you just go h3, g4, like g5, and try to attack the king. Sometimes it works. It goes d4, which is a bit strange, I would say. So do we need to play a4 to slow him down a little? Or maybe knight a3. Okay, let's try knight a3. Once again, we de develop a piece, it should not be too bad. Mm 
but yeah, anyway, uh, we'll try to get this G forcing one day. Okay, B5. Takes, takes, and now we need to to start doing something in the king side. So let's start by playing H3. He will probably play C4. It's actually funny that sometimes, like in this uh, in these positions, people play really fast. It's a very very sharp position, but sometimes you just know what you are doing. Like you have to play C4, you have to play H3, G4 is white, and then. Like we get some position and then we start to think when uh, white is checkmating already or uh, when he's completely lost. It happens very often in these uh, King's Indian structures. Okay, so F6 or what? Yeah, maybe F6. So we are not worried about G takes. We'll probably play Knight H4, Knight F5 there. So I would, uh, yeah, I was, no, he does go G takes, okay. I said we are not worried, the, it does not mean it's a, it's a bad move though. It's just that we are not worried. Okay, so if we, Knight H4 looks really tempting to be honest. I don't even want to think here, but I keep thinking for some reason. Okay, I don't know what's the reason. Let's go on h4. But this is exactly the, the scenario I described. Like, probably black just plays king h8, knight f5, queen e6, and then he's like much better as there is no checkmate here. And then as white, you start to realize something went wrong and you start to think, but it's a bit too late. It happens, it happens very, very often in this uh, kind of position. Here exactly, I don't think we are uh, we are in trouble though. Black is probably okay. He can play king h8, and it's a long way to to get checkmated for him. But it's also very obvious long term compensation for white. So we can just play it slow as well, like king h2, queen f2, rook g1, and so on. Yeah. All right, so let's say we go knight f5, queen g6, bishop h4. He will probably play rook g8, will protect g2 somehow, like queen f2 maybe. And then we'll, yeah, then we'll prepare uh, some slow thing. Maybe we even go rook f2 to, to control the b4 square. Like in many lines, he will attack d3 by playing knight c5. We will play rook d1. And then it's important that he does not have a knight b4. Or maybe it is not important, I don't know. But it feels sort of important to me. Also, playing queen f2 allows uh, some queen takes g2 in many lines after knight b4. There would be some thematic ideas with like taking everything on g3, playing queen takes g2, taking on e4 and stuff. Rook f2 is way more solid as uh, these terms. I think there is no increment in this game actually. And it's quite a miracle that it will be me who will benefit from it. No, there, there is an increment. Okay, then it's fine. So he plays queen h5, but it does not really help much. Rook g6 runs into bishop f3. So slowly but surely, once again, we bring the pieces. And he is doing the same thing, by the way, which is smart. Um, All right, let's keep playing simple. So bishop f3, queen g6, rook g2. Yeah, and then something like takes and uh, queen somewhere. 
let's say takes and queen g3, provoke queen g6 and go to f2. Now rook g1 is a strand. He goes to h8, okay, we bring the rook. So now you can see that it definitely went our way, like all the all the white pieces are attacking the king, which means it should be completely lost for black. Like his pieces are way too far. Let's play bishop h5 to bring the guy to the attack as well. Yeah, and he lost some time, but uh, the position was really bad anyway. Thanks for the game. All right. Who else is there? Andrew 74, are you there? Well, the play zone says he's there. So we have a chance to play him. up now nah, he does not want to play okay then i will play and win that's how we teach them okay okay i had enough of one of four so let's try something reasonable this time against mr Ephraim rodriguez pardon for uh for pronouncing it the wrong way just in case But however I pronounce it, could you please play move? Yeah, e6, okay, fine. Then we play. It's very nice to be back to the normal territory after all this Dutch nonsense. So we play the London system this time. Um, so how do they start here? I think they go knight d2, knight c6, c3 in this exact move order. And after CD, I think they want ED normally. Actually, kind of like CD on the other hand. I mean, I know they don't they don't play it, but okay, I will. So ED is the main move for sure. Yeah, but now we can try to play this position in some tricky way. Let's say we go Bishop G5. So it's very, very similar to the to the exchange slav. And it's a typical thing here is that basically black plays bishop d6, which does not look natural uh, to, to strong players. In general, because it feels like it's white who has to trade this bishop, so the d3 bishop is be uh, better than the one on c8. And the other way around as well. But yeah, for some reason here, black is happy to play bishop d6 and trade the bishops, and white is normally try, trying to avoid this exchange by playing uh, bishop g5. He plays e5, which um, which is good. Mm, so how do we get something playable here? Maybe we can try e4. And then after, uh, like whatever he plays, pretty much we will just castle. Like after ed, we will castle. After uh, knight takes d4, we'll take on d4 and castle. It's definitely not uh, not how you try to, uh, to get advantage, but it should not be too bad as well. So we are simply hustling here a little. Okay. Yeah, so I promised to castle here. Maybe it takes d5 was interesting, but I don't think so. And d takes e4. Some people are asking if their uh, if their challenges are active, but uh, 
you're you're asking the, the wrong guy like i find it very very difficult to to accept them even and it took me like 10 minutes to get to the new play zone so uh there is no way i could figure out if your challenge is active or not what's going on here by the way did we just wonder well if we did blunder then it's not a big drama it seems like it could have been worse so can we play queen f4 um, okay let's try queen f4 so he has g5 now he can also take on h4 many good moves here for uh, for black takes okay let's gamble till the very end let's just take that was my original idea and it is quite a bad idea but um once we start gambling we have to gamble so g5 queen d2 is what i want like g takes h4 queen takes h6 and then we have some bishop c4 idea and stuff maybe it is not like that bad what white is definitely only trying to to make a draw there but maybe these terms will be lucky enough okay takes queen f6 queen f6 i think is a blunder so bishop c4 check wins here yeah that was very unlucky for him actually i think white uh, white was just way worse but now he will he will lose the queen so rook f7 runs into queen takes f6 and there is a pin and after bishop e6 it's very important that there is bishop takes e6 which is probably what he missed uh, so yeah the gamble paid off But this is de definitely as far from a well-deserved win as, uh, yeah, as it can be, you know. All right, thanks for the game. Sorry for this one. Um, I feel a bit ashamed, to, to, to be honest, to play this way. And uh, so, I think we are about to play the last game for uh, for today, or maybe two more games. Okay, let's play the the Karukan this time. We finally faced one e four. Okay. And c three. Okay. Um. I think queen c seven was the old theory here. I think before Magnus. Uh, started to uh, to play the, as this line is white in all the games queen c7 was considered to be the best reply um and the, and the point is to prevent uh bishop f4 and they would say you go bishop d6 knight e7 or f6 and then you get a very comfortable setup while uh, white bishop is stuck on c1 then magnus came and proved that it's not that simple for black anyway but queen c7 i think remains to be one of the of the main moves all right so do we play it with knight f6 or uh or knight e7 let's go knight f6 maybe knight e7 was also a reasonable way to play this but i had something different in mind so what i had in mind was castling long and then trying some uh, kingside attack which is a very thematic idea in uh in the carlos bot system which is pretty much exactly what we have on the board with colors reversed yeah so takes takes we, we work on the g file and now we're given the uh, the free pawn i believe g3 
which obviously makes life way easier. We'll just go rook g8, rook g7, rook d2, j8, bring everybody to the g file. And it should normally be enough for a win. I guess I can remove rook h2, j8 just to gamble a little. I don't even know what the gamble, to be honest. I don't see, see a way to use it. Like knight h4, rook g8, queen takes h5, but then we have a uh, queen takes d3. Okay, we survived one pre-move. So now... The plan was to go rook g7. There is nothing with rook g7. Nothing wrong with rook g7, sorry. So I will play it. H3 was actually hanging, but uh, first of all, I missed it originally, to, to be honest. And secondly, it's not that I regret it. Rook g7 followed by rook g8 is not a mistake. Yeah, rook e1. Okay, let's bring the rook. Knight h2, but then we can take g2, right? Yeah. And we take b2. And this is a bit too much to, to survive, I'm afraid. Okay. Do we trade the bishops? We probably want our bishop on e4 instead of trading it. So I go bishop g6 with the idea of playing bishop e4 followed by f5. e2 is also hanging, so... Uh, But once again, I mean, it's quite easy to to discuss such positional things when you are a billion of pounds up. So yeah, bishop f3, okay, I guess takes, takes on g4. Once again, it's just a free piece pretty much. Okay, now we bring the knight to f5 to attack h4, g3 and everything. But once again, it would make more uh, more sense to to comment on such moves if White would have uh, like one more rook, for instance. It would still be lost for him, but then it would uh, it it would take some uh, some precision from Black. This way, okay, I'm trying to show some ideas, but in general, um, basically all the moves. Uh, uh, that are not a rook blunder win here. And remove h3. Yeah, here are signs. So I guess we will play one more game. Uh, as uh, we've lost some time because of me trying to figure out how to get to the new play zones and how to get to the old play zone and then how to get back. So let's play uh, Anshuman Mistra. Let's try knight f3 this time. c6 and maybe c6, okay. He actually managed to confuse me a little. Mm. Okay, let's try something like d3. Knight d2 followed by e4. Is bishop g4 a tempo? Okay. So once again, we simply develop the the pieces in a normal way. No, uh, no g4 nonsense. I think there is some theory with g4 there, but um, we do not really need it. C5 is a bit strange, I would say. Like normally you you don't play the Karakan to play C6, C5 that often. And it kind of uh, kind of gives White some tempting options of taking on D5 and trying to to gain something from um, from a fast from a fast development. But I I don't know if it really works here. 
we'll try. Maybe it doesn't. Like, if I really want to do something, I probably have to try d4 instead. On the other hand, like, what's the point of d4 after some knight c6? I don't really know. Okay, let's switch to to playing boring then. Play a4. So now we sort of play the Philidor actually. Or something like Philidor. Some weird key, a King's Indian without the bishop on g7. So we just go c3, rook e1, and so on. It's kind of good for Black here that his pawn is on e6, not e5. As it's more of a weakness on e5 normally. And here he can comfortably attack the d3 pawn by playing bishop g6 at some point. So black is a bit better, but it should not be should not be much. Yeah, queen c7 looks not wow, he goes a5. A5 is a very strange move. So he basically makes sure uh, our knight will never get away from c4. I mean, go away. And we are obviously very happy to see that. Not that he is in trouble, but I think now it's it's white who is uh, kind of pressing a little. Okay, he goes bishop g6 now, which I think is a signal to play knight e5. He will probably take. Yeah, takes, takes. Now maybe bishop f5. Or maybe he he will not even try to, to avoid this trade with knight takes g6. Which also makes sense in a way, like if he will avoid it, then we'll have this brilliant knight on c4. Yeah, this is what he does. Okay. And f takes, wow. Don't know what to say, I would play h takes. We'll try to be polite. F takes is a very aggressive move, but it's a bit, a bit too bold even for me, to be honest. Yeah, and this is, I think, a blunder. So we take on d5 and uh, win a game. But it's a massive relief to realize all the sync was not a deep concept, but uh, yeah, but simply um, see a simply a sequence of blunders, so to speak. Okay, let's play rook e3, rook f3. Trade a pair of rooks. He probably has some different challenge. Like if he plays g5 and h6, then he will have all the pieces on the dark squares. Yeah, maybe this is his point actually. It's funny. No, it is not. So basically if he would play g5, it would be some kind of a checkers setup. We could basically try the same thing, like give up the e3 bishop, play c4, b3, rook b1, and f3. But I'm a bit too tired tonight, so we'll just um, I just convert the, the extra piece slowly. h4, threatening h5. I think white would be much better even without the a1 rook. And once again, an hour ago, I would probably try to, to to sacrifice the rook somehow. Not even sacrifice, basically give up a rook. And then to play this to, uh, to get a more interesting game. But once again, it has been a long day, to be honest. Okay, queen h7 is checkmate, which I think is a very... I was about to say a very nice way to 
uh, uh, to finish the session, but it's not that nice actually. But well, but we will finish it anyway. So thanks you guys for uh, for watching, for uh, following the action, and see you soon at Chess Twenty Four.